Champions Cup final for the 2020-2021 season. It's an all-French affair. La Rochelle up against Toulouse from Twickenham. Tomorrow for me. Probably today for most of you guys in Europe by the time this video hits you. Uh, we will go through the lineups for this one. Uh, some of the stats, the predictions, the ref, recent results. And um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to play out. Uh, there will be 10,000 fans in attendance for this one, which is great news. Uh, if there's one thing I've seen from games which have had even limited attendance, the amount of noise they make is always infinitely better than just the fake crowd noise. It's, uh, it's just a much more natural thing. It just fits in. And even if it's 2,000, you can still hear them. They make more noise than what they're worth. Although, being fans from England, I'm not sure if they'll get behind a side in particular. I'm sure they're all corporate tickets. But anyway, fans in attendance, that is definitely a bit of good news. Uh, it's a, a game with battles within battles and stories within stories. You've got Toulouse looking to get that fifth star on the jersey. Probably lent the fans hoping and praying that they don't get that fifth star before they get it because they're both equal on four stars at the moment. La Rochelle in their first final looking to prove themselves on the international or the European scene as like, you know, a European Champions Cup winning team. You've got the John O'Gibbs and Ronan O'Gara story. I mean, it's just, there's, there's heaps to like about this game. And uh, hopefully it proves to be a cracking one. Finals tend to be kind of low scoring tight affairs, but you never know what is going to happen with both these sides. Uh, for La Rochelle, remember they beat uh, Leinster 32-23 in which in itself was putting down a bit of a marker for them. Um, you know, I think everyone was predicting based on reputation that it would be a Toulouse and uh, Lens the final. But it is La Rochelle. So they, as I said, big forward pack that really fronted up in the in the previous game, in the semi-final. They've made a few changes. Preso gets a start. Bugari and uh, Antonio are the front row. Sezi and Skelton are the second row. And Skelton is just such a big unit, man. Uh, I think that's he, he he really posed such a physical presence on the on, on Leinster that I don't know he was just uh, one of those kind of immovable object kind of guys. But that being said, the big Aussie is up against a couple of big Aussies on the other side. Uh, Aldrich Gordon and Vito make out the back row, so very athletic. Good to see Gordon up from the bench. The Lieberberg drops to the bench in his place. Uh, Vito's getting a bit long in the tooth, but he still proves to be pretty athletic. The former rollback, uh, Aldrit is one of the most, I don't know, he's got a, a really good read on the game. He's very, very quick. Uh, he's good at the breakdown. He's got great hands. He, he spots a line break. He's just got a kind of complete package kind of game. You can't really fit him into just one box. He's not like an, you know, a David Pocock who's mainly a fetcher or, um, you know, something else like that. Um, Toyo Caballo, Nihaya West is a very useful 19 combo, man. If you told me a year ago that Ihaya West and Tawira Kobalo, especially West, would be leading a team into a Champions Cup final, I would have thought you were mad. But now I definitely believe it, man. These guys are, are performing really well. Uh, Botia and Zumaru is the same midfield. Raymond Rule and Dylan Lades. <clears throat> Likewise, if you'd told South African fans from the Stormers that Raymond Rule and Dylan Lades was going to be in a Champions Cup final, and that they'd just been absolutely tearing it up. They probably would have laughed at you. Uh, Dulan, very secure pair of hands at the back as well. Uh, Ruterio is on the bench. Plisson, um, Facundo Bosch, and so on. Put the link. I'll put the full teams in the description if you want to check out the whole lineups. Uh, for Toulouse, certainly a bunch of game breakers as well. You don't make this final by accident. By Malvaca and Falmoina as the front row. They will be missing Julian Marchand, who is suspended for this one. That's a tragedy. Uh, apparently, his brother, Guillaume Marchand, is on the bench. I didn't even know he had a brother, which uh, speaks to my level of knowledge, unfortunately, but it'll be good to see him get a crack. Bit of pressure on him for a final, but Movaka is an experienced guy. I mentioned the two big Australians, Rory and Richie Arnold, in the second row. So, yeah, man, three big Australian locks in this game, all starting. The Arnold brothers are pretty big units in themselves, so that's just going to be a fascinating battle within a battle. Uh, Elstart gets a start at six. Cross and Kaino uh, make out the back row, and as I mentioned, the battles within the battles. Kaino up against Vito, both former All Blacks. Um, you know, Cross against Aldrit, the two French internationals. There's heaps, 
heaps across the park for this one. Uh, Elstad getting the start is a bit of good news for him uh, as well. He'll try to, to disrupt whatever La Rochelle can do in terms of their breakdown work for sure. Uh, Dupont into Mark is the 9-10 combo, all French combo. Dupont, best nine in the world. Uh, Smith put in a pretty good game yesterday down here in Super Rugby. But anyway, um, yeah, he's, he's a force that it's very hard to stop. Because no matter what you do, if you put two guys on him, it inevitably opens up space for somebody else. He just gets away stupid passes. He's got a really good eye for the game. Um, and Intermark's got a lot bigger reputation than Ehi West. But as I said, Ehi West has been really impressing. So good chance for him to, to put his hand up once again. Aki, Peter Aki, has been phenomenal in that midfield for, for everything Toulouse does. Very good at beating defenders. And Malia actually gets a start. Uh, at 13, there's no Zach Holmes uh, for this one. That's an interesting shift. I think Malia only got about one minute in the, the semi-final. Uh, LaBelle has been phenomenal on that left wing. Good step on him. Colby, you don't need any introduction. And Medar is there at fullback. Um, Tekori's on the bench. Tolofua, Ramos, and, uh, and so on. So, yeah, they beat Bordeaux 21-9. Both teams pretty comfortable semi-final winners, to be fair. So, hopefully... Very worthy finalists. Uh, Luke Pierce is the ref for this one. A little bit of criticism that they didn't pick a Frenchman to ref two French teams, but uh, people tell me that Luke's, Luke Pierce speaks decent French. I'm not sure that I've heard him use a lot of it during the games, but apparently that's the case. Uh, when you look at the stats head-to-head, -head, it's kind of hard to look at the competition stats, especially for this season because it was so disrupted. But uh, Toulouse kicked more penalties. La Rochelle get more clean breaks. and beat uh, Toulouse beat more defenders. Uh, La Rochelle makes more offloads, so there's a good split across the stats that show that both sides really bring something to the game. The average points they've scored to lose average is 27, La Rochelle average is 24, so not much in it. These two teams should be pretty even finalists. Recent results between the two teams, they played in February and it was Toulouse 14 to 11 over La Rochelle, but that was during the Six Nations, so both sides missing a few big guns. And the previous result prior to that, I think was back in September last year, Toulouse got that one done as well. 39 points to 23. That may be why the bookies have got to lose as favorites for this one, but only by two points. So, yeah. Should be a pretty fascinating final. Unfortunately for me, the kickoff is prior to four in the morning, so it's a pretty nasty time. Either I'll get up live and watch it or watch it first thing in the morning. Either way, I'll definitely be watching this one. Should be a fantastic game. Internationals from France and other countries... On display, these are the top two teams in the top 14. They knocked out Leinster, and they knocked out Bordeaux. They knocked out Racing 92, like a bunch of teams. What was it, Bordeaux, that knocked out Racing 92? I can't even remember. A bunch of teams fell by the wayside. There's only two left standing. One of them will get their hands on the cup, either the fifth time for Toulouse or the first time for La Rochelle. Who are you guys backing? Who do you want to see win? Who do you think is going to win? Let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.